assembly. After you remove the components from the box, you'll see the LC Pro SD console. And on the top of it, you may either have the mounting brackets for the IFL shown in the red square, or they may be separate and may need to be mounted onto the LC Pro SD. If they are not mounted, remove the Phillips screws inside the red square and put the IFL mounting brackets in between the strap mount and the council and screw the screws back in. Then use the thumb screws to mount the IFL council on top of the LC Pro SD council. Next, attach the clear plastic hoses to the LC Pro console as you see in yellow. And you're going to match the colors on the clear tubes to the colors on the console. Black to black, red to red, and white to white. Next, mount the various cables onto the various connectors onto the LC Pro SD console and the IFL console. It's not possible to put them in incorrectly as each one of the connectors is different. You will know which one fits where if it fits the correct attachment. Next, there are three ports on the side of the LC Pro SD for chemicals. One is for soda lime that is white and when it's spent turns brown. One is for dry right in the middle, which takes the blue chemical and it turns purple or pink when spent. And then there's an uh, H2O trap, uh, which can also, and it has uh, foam pieces inside the column. Each one of the chambers has O-rings and you should put them in place with soda lime on the left, dry right in the center, and the foam chamber on the right. When they're in place, you can move to the next slide. ADC Bioscientific has something they call the wetter column, and it's not something that other companies offer. It allows you to make measurements with humidity levels above ambient, not just below or at ambient, but above ambient. And so you can set H2O levels near ambient to prevent the chamber and the leaf from becoming inactive if necessary. Also, you'll see that above the color-coded clear cables, you have a white port and that is for air going into the measuring chamber. We'll discuss more about that later. To add humidity to the measuring chamber, the system uses melantorite, a chemical also known as iron 2 sulfate 7 hydrate. And what happens is that the system allows you to add the humidity and the chemical becomes uh, either siderotil or rosanite after the uh, chemical is used and it adds water to the chamber. The white air intake port is surrounded by the red box in the center of the screen. It allows you to either use ambient air or a tank of air that has the mixture that you prefer. If you're using ambient air, the plastic tube may be hooked to the air probe that is also with the system. It's a long plastic tube uh, with a stake on the bottom, and it allows you to put the stake in the ground and allows air to come from an area not near your mouth. The idea is to prevent a momentary change in CO2 level, which can cause errors in your measurement. Some people uh, use a tube that drags 
near their feet that allows air intake. Some people use the air probe. Other people use a box that is a medium size, connect the plastic tube on one end with tape and put a hole on the other end of the box, which allows mixing, uh, mixing of air and prevents momentary changes in air. Another way to do it is to put a box inside a backpack and do the same thing. The IFL comes with two data cards. Take one data card and put it inside the IFL console as shown. You can also see that it's possible to hook up an HDMI port to allow the screen to be on television should you want to do that. The USB port is there for transferring uh, information, but currently the data card is the best way to transfer your data from the IFL to your computer. There is an adapter in the IFL box that allows you to put the data card into the adapter and then the end of the adapter has a USB port on it and you put that into the computer and use it for data transfer. Next, let's mount the light source for the IFL onto the LC Pro SD leaf cuvette chamber. The unit has an electronic connection that allows collection of data from the bottom of the leaf chamber to the IFL. Use the connectors that you see and plug them in place. It's important when mounting the light source, as you see on the right hand side, that the slide fits into a slot into the chamber. Next, take the second data card and put it into the LC Pro SD as shown. The system takes one or two gigabyte data cards. They're memory cards. Those are the only kind that will work with the system. Next, lift up the console and lay it on its side. You're going to see two locking mechanisms to lock the bottom component in place. Use your fingers and thumbs to remove the bottom plate and turn the system upside down. Now in the right hand picture, you're going to see a battery location where you put the battery in. And you're also going to see the place to add CO2 cartridges to allow CO2 levels above ambient. Now, if you look back on the left hand slide, you're going to see what's called the Schrader valve. And what that does is it releases any CO2 pressure that might be in, a, in an existing CO2 cartridge. You're going to do this uh, to make sure that the pressurization is released. If you're putting one in for the first time, it's not important, but it's always a good procedure to always check the Schrader valve before you change the CO2 cartridge or try and attempt to change the CO2 cartridge. That will prevent damage to the O-ring at the base of the CO2 cartridge. Now, if you're going to change the CO2 cartridge, you're going to use a coin or the tool that is used to remove the CO2 cartridge. It's threaded, so that prevents it from shooting out and injuring anyone. So you turn that and you remove the CO2 cartridge or the mount and place a CO2 cartridge in place. When you place the CO2 cartridge into the chamber, you tighten it back down and you'll hear a pssst sound that indicates that it's been pierced and that it's in position. The O-ring prevents leaking. The Schrader valve that you see on the left can also be operated with a coin or with a tool that's provided. Next, turn the instrument over and make sure that the measuring screen is facing upward. 
you're going to connect the power cable that allows both consoles to share power and share information. It's not possible to put them in the wrong place. They go in as shown. The one component does cover the Schrader valve uh, as shown. And you can see down at the bottom, there's a connector for the wetter column, should you want to use the wetter column. In review, both the IFL console and the LC Pro SD console require one to two gigabyte data cards and will only accept that size. They must be inserted for the instruments to work and to collect data. Second, keep the battery on a charger when not in use. A battery not in use will discharge over time and it will shorten battery life. If it's not kept charged, the battery life will be shortened significantly. Third, the system will operate with either the black foam column in place or the wetter column. You choose which one you want to use. Do not turn the system on unless all connectors and data cards are in place. The system will run either on battery power or means current. When you turn the instrument on, it's going to take several minutes for the instrument to warm up and for synchronization to occur between the IFL console and the LC Pro SD console. Importantly, number seven, before you replace a CO2 cartridge, it is imperative to use a coin or the metal tool to release any remaining pressure from the CO2 cartridge using the Schrader valve. This will prevent damage to the O-rings around the CO2 cartridge. The CO2 cartridge holder has screw threads, and that does prevent injury to the operator.